It's 8 p.m. and here are our top stories in 90 seconds. There's people driving still. Oh my God. That's so crazy. A tornado touches down on the front range, causing everyone to stop in their tracks. There we go, there's a tornado. Wow. Tonight, deputies are assessing damage and ensuring everyone is safe. We're live on the ground, and Mike is tracking the chance for severe weather tomorrow. It's a big emphasis in Colorado right now, and uh, we're trying to improve the safety for people and animals alike. A tragic crash on I-25. One person is killed after a collision with an elk creates a chain reaction of crashes. Tragic, I mean, that's, that's awful. We look at how the state is trying to keep both you and wildlife safe. A mother accused in her son's murder could be in the metro. What police want you to be on the lookout for? Didn't sit well, and I was like, what is that? As my mouth dropped open. A viewer contacts Denver 7 because one of the horses at a Thornton carousel is not like the others. It's a dehumanizing tactic, and it sort of shows that we are not, you know, a people. Plus, new hope for families affected by Alzheimer's. That individuals may have more time to actively participate in activities and to have sustained independence. Good Monday evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. Air Tracker 7 with some incredible video tonight showing a tornado in Weld County this evening. This is near Platteville, east of I-25, but from all of the pictures and videos we received tonight, this one could be spotted from miles away. Weld County says one tornado touched down. Thankfully, there are no reports of injuries, but there is some structure damage. We have Chief Meteorologist but first we start with CB Cotton with more on the damage. Good evening, CB. What are you seeing where you're at tonight? Good evening, Jessica. Well, we're just west of Platteville, and we're getting a great view of the path that this tornado took here. I can see debris on the power lines in front of me, and it's clear this tornado traveled from this area all the way down here through this woman's property before flipping this shed on its side. You can see all of the debris that just came outside of this structure. And we're also told some kittens were found in here alive. Unfortunately, they are okay. Scattered throughout Weld County, we're seeing structure damage like this. A county spokesperson tells us, fortunately, no people were hurt, but certainly this tornado was still shocking to everyone who witnessed it. We knew that something was happening, a storm was happening, because we felt all the wind come in. So we ran out here, actually, to kind of, like, take care of the pool, make sure nothing was going to fly away. And then we were, looked over that way, and that's when we saw it. So if you live in this area and had damage to your property, Weld County government is asking to hear from you. They want, it, want you to send photos of your property damage to them. That email is PIO at weldgovernment.com. Again, PIO at weldgovernment.com. They want to include all of this information in their damage assessment report. So certainly, if you had any damage like this to your property, make sure you get your photos into them. Reporting live in Weld County this evening, I'm CB Cotton for Denver 7 News on Local 3. Uh, a huge Huge mess to clean up, but good thing no one was hurt. Thank you, CB. Now we want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Mike, this tornado hit right around 5 this evening. Jessica, this is the peak of tornado season in Colorado. Early June, late afternoon. We've had a lot of rain on the eastern plains throughout most of the spring, so there's plenty of moisture in the soil. Thunderstorms develop. And from that, we had one really good severe storm that popped up late this afternoon, about 4 o'clock, moved over southwest Weld County into the Platteville area. Fortunately, even with the building and the development in southwestern Weld County, this was over a fairly lightly populated area across the state. Scattered storms continue. They will diminish overnight tonight. We had a hot day today, 91 in Denver, 95 at Greeley, 93 at Fort Collins. And that heat, along with the moisture in the soil from the recent rains, gave rise to the scattered, strong thunderstorm activity. So what happens after this? It looks hot, mainly dry for the next three days. High fire danger increasing. Soils will be drying on the eastern plains. It'll turn cooler late this week but not much rain. We'll talk about the storms and the seven day in more detail in a few minutes. Thank you, Mike. And we received dozens and dozens of pictures and videos from tonight's tornado. Many of them are posted on the Discover Colorado through your photos Facebook page. We also have a live stream feed of the tornado right now on the free Denver 7 Plus app. 
A tragic crash on I-25 this morning at Happy Canyon near Castle Rock. One person was killed and nine others injured. State Patrol says a truck hit an elk in the middle of the highway. A second car pulled over to assist, but shortly after, another car hit the same elk, causing a chain reaction of crashes. An 18-year-old woman from Minnesota died. She was a passenger in the original car that hit the elk first. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is trying to do it all that they can to prevent crashes like that one. Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo spoke with wildlife officials on their plans to keep both people and animals safe. They had it shut down at Happy Canyon, so I had to get off at Castle Pines. Jennifer Kaler was heading home from work when she got caught in traffic. I work at Swedish, so I'm on the interstate 24-7. Officials say a Minnesota driver with an 18-year-old passenger heading southbound on I-25 near Happy Canyon Road struck an elk and pulled over on the side of the road. A good Samaritan stopped to help. All three people from the two vehicles were outside when officials say another driver hit the elk in the middle of the road, lost control and struck the 18-year-old passenger and a vehicle, throwing all three pedestrians over the barrier. Two other cars also on the highway crashed. The 18-year-old struck died at the scene. Jennifer says it's tragic, but adds that it's not uncommon to see wildlife on the highway. Turkeys, deer. She's had a few close encounters herself. Several times. I actually about hit one getting on the on-ramp the other night. Um, she just caught, come right across the car and I had to slam on my brakes. There are no wildlife crossings in the form of a gate or a bridge in this area, a technique used in other parts of Colorado to protect drivers and wildlife. Just a few miles south at the I-25 Gap project, there are currently four wildlife crossings under construction set to open this summer. In the aspect of, of the Gap project, it's funneling them to these underpasses with the hopes that, that they use them there and, and stay off the roads. Jason Clay, a spokesperson with Colorado Parks and Wildlife, says they're working in conjunction with the Colorado Department of Public Transportation. It's a big emphasis in Colorado right now, and uh, we're trying to improve the safety for people and animals alike. A study is underway where the accident happened to assess if fencing or a wildlife crossing is needed. That should be implemented so they're not constantly getting in the way. However, again, I do think that even if that doesn't get put in place, they need to, I mean, we need to be vigilant and we need to look at our surroundings. A solution many are on board to keep everyone on the interstate safe. These animals don't know, they don't understand it's a highway and you're going 75, 80, you can't stop that quick. Now, injuries sustained by those drivers and passengers involved in this crash range from minor injuries all the way up to life-threatening injuries. And we just spoke to a resident in this area off Happy Canyon Road. You see right down this road, an elk sign warning people that there's elk in the area. She tells me there's two elk just down this road grazing. And I got to tell you, we've seen at least four or five vehicles just speed past this curb. That resident telling us, it is bad and people need to be careful. Reporting live in Douglas County, Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. Stern warning. Thank you, Addie. A mother suspected of killing her seven-year-old son in Nevada could be here in the Denver metro. Just take a look at your screen. This is 35-year-old Samantha Moreno Rodriguez. Police in Las Vegas say her son's body was found on May 28th near the town of Mountain Springs, Nevada. Police say she was last seen driving a blue 2007 Dodge Caliber with California license plate 6WLH211. Again, police have reason to believe she is in our area, so if you know anything, call police. The district attorney's office is finally releasing some details on the arrest of a state trooper for felony menacing charges. The DA originally declined to even say which department Wesley Dawkin worked for. Today, prosecutors released this photo along with a document that says Dawkin pulled an AR-15 on another driver during an argument in April. Dawkin was apparently off duty at the time. He was later fired. Prosecutors believe he may have stepped over the line previously and are urging anyone with information to come forward. It was a busy day across Weld County with the tornado warning with some damage. Conditions will quiet down tonight. Will there be another round of severe weather for tomorrow afternoon? It's a dehumanizing tactic, and it sort of shows that we are not, you know, a people. It may take a minute to recognize what is wrong with this carousel, but Denver 7 viewers are making sure we are all aware. It's just, you know, further proof that American culture has kind of frozen Native Americans in the past. And coming up later, 
scammers are trying to capitalize on the state's million dollar vaccine lottery. Your average resident of Colorado, especially those who are targeted, are not always fully aware of uh, these potential scams.